A segmented view shows different scenes of grazing elk, campers setting up a tent, geyser bursts, and crackling campfires. A title, Parked at Home. Episode 2, Yard Birding, presented by Dave Trevino, biologist. So birding is not what you would call an action sport. In fact, it can be largely mundane, a, a hobby of quiet precision and focus. And that makes it perfect in today's sheltering in place environment. So why watch birds? For one thing, birds are everywhere. They live on all of the continents and can be found in rural, suburban, and even urban areas. One of the things that makes birds so accessible is many are active in the daytime and they also communicate by sight and sound. This makes them much easier to spot. Another good reason to get out there birding is that studies have shown that being out in the natural world has positive effects on human health. Listening to natural sounds has been shown to boost productivity, decrease blood pressure, and lower your stress levels. All of this helps to promote a stronger immune system. All you have to do is step outside and bird. With over 800 species of birds in North America, it's hard to learn to recognize all of them. I recommend breaking them down into groups of birds that share similar features. Text, these features include size, example, body size. These guys walk on the ground, have large chunky bodies. Owls are large with rounded head. Proportion, example, bill, neck, and leg length. They have a medium-sized bill and a moderate to long neck. They have long necks, long bill, usually very long legs, and a short tail. Posture, raptors. They like to sit upright on branches or fences. Woodpeckers like to cling to tree trunks. Songbirds, so this is the most diverse group, and it's easiest to break them down to even smaller groups. Photos show warblers, blackbirds, finches, thrushes, corvids, and tree creepers. Once you get the general group that a bird belongs to, now where do you go to find the bird? So you can either use a paper guidebook or electronically via a smartphone app or an online guide. One of the advantages of using a smartphone app and online guide is that they will walk you through all of the ID hints and then give you a list of potential matches. And if you record your finding, it adds more knowledge to the community of science that is helpful for bird conservation. Here are some hints on what exactly to look for. Size and shape. Focus on the relative size. Is it a sparrow or a robin-sized bird? Color patterns and markings. Where was the color? How much of it was there? Is there a pattern like streaks or spots? rings around the eyes? Behavior. What is the bird doing? How did it fly? What was it eating? Habitat and range. Are you in an open field or a forest? Range can be a little bit more tricky. Sounds. Not only can the songs alert you to the presence of a bird, it can be the key to identifying some birds. You can use the Voice Memo app on your smartphone to record and upload bird songs to help with ID. So now you know what your bird is. Congratulations. That's a huge step in birding. Last thoughts from Dave. We have lost almost 3 billion birds since the 1970s. Across the continent, the numbers have plummeted. To help bring birds back, there are seven simple actions that we all can take. One, make windows safer from bird collisions. Break up the reflection by installing screens or use film or paint. Two, keep cats indoors or make sure they are on a leash and or supervised while outside. Three, plant native bird-friendly plants. Four, reduce plastic use. Five, avoid pesticide usage. Six, drink coffee that is good for birds. Shade-grown coffee comes from farms that provide forest-like habitat for birds rather than clearing the forest. Seven, now that you are a bird expert, watch and record birds that you see. Now get out and bird. Coming soon, episode three. Check back on our Facebook or YouTube channels, Explore Nature and At Nature NPS. A logo, National Park Service.